Okay, now we are going into really exciting parts of physics because now we will be able to look at the world and predict what will happen with it. Um, <coughs> because so far we discussed how to describe uh, uh, emotion of an object. Now we can design, well, we can look at the universe <coughs> and predict how it is going to move and more than more than that i mean if we understand how it is going to move depending on the configuration we can adjust that configuration in such a way that we we will ask the object or the universe actually to make sure that the object will move the way we wanted it if you actually i mean we, we are doing it almost subconsciously because <coughs> uh well at the end of the class you will want to get out from this room and you will have to ask the universe to help you to get out from here you will uh, now today you will know how actually you are getting out from the classroom uh, all right it um, and you will know how to get uh, out from the classroom because uh, when body interacts with other bodies in the universe it results in the particular motion of that body that external that that, that, that influence uh, of that ex, uh, of the body with the rest of the universe is referred to as an interaction now there are ver various ways of describing interaction because the interaction is a phenomenon now we use we introduce several physical quantities which we use to describe uh, that interaction again uh, you are you will be actually so um, well you will think again through the through those quantities so that sometimes you will not even distinguish really phenomenon with the description uh, <coughs> there are these are the vector quantities which we are going to use uh, these are force torque and impulse each of those quantities is actually equivalent each of them describes interaction although I know that when most of you will think uh, instead of interaction that there is a force exerted on something you will even you will even then think well actually force is a physical quantity really what happens the phenomenon is not that there is a force but the two objects interact well there are also scalar quantities which uh, which describe interaction between bodies um, and uh, choice of which quantity we, we, we select depends on this what kind of information we we want to, to know so uh, force and work are practically I mean, you will see that they are uh, practically the same I mean whenever whatever you can find out about the motion of the object from the force well not everything yeah because uh, work uh, work uh, <coughs> will say how speed is affected force will will say how velocity is affected uh, but uh, <coughs> we can be interested uh, yeah, because I mean if we know for example what is going to be the direction we don't care if if we if we find our velocity if you already know the uh, direction we know most of it the only thing which we need now is the magn its magnitude so uh, using work energy theorem to figure out what will be speed is as good as fine as using newton's second law of motion to find uh, to find velocity um, how an object reacts to interaction uh, depends on a certain property of uh, of objects which is referred to as inertia uh, 
yes, both the nature of the interactions, interactions, more than one actually, I, I, I wrote here interaction, but really it is interaction with the rest of the universe, uh, and the characteristics of the object uh, affect the motion of that object. All right, now how actually the uh, object uh, reacts to that external influence uh, is called inertia. You can think that inertia is a resistance to change in, in, in change in motion. Now, change by change in motion, uh, because if I think about if an object moves in a projectile motion, uh, fact that that if I toss an object at its face in the projectile motion does not refer to the resistance in change. Uh, Change, change refers really to velocity. Velocity uh, is uh, an object tries to maintain its velocity. This is what inertia is. If it is easy to change velocity, then uh, well, that uh, object has low inertia. If it is uh, not easy to change that motion, then uh, uh, inertia is high. Now, inertia can be related, I mean, there are two types of inertia. Right now, we are talking only about particles, or even if we think about objects, we approximate them as particles. In other words, we are, uh, uh, at this, uh, in this chapter, we are talking about so-called translational motion of an object. So, really, you don't, if I waltz, for example, you won't see, you don't care about the fact that I'm spinning. Uh, you care only about what happens with the well kind of location of my body, not not the orientation of my body. Uh, there is also inertia associated with my rotation. Um, I really like the uh, uh, the, the movie, but it's not that uh, it's not that uh, new movie. It's quite old movie, I think. Uh, uh, Space Cowboys, and I'm not interested about. Um, well, politics or the action, but there was a very exciting moment when they were docking to the space to that space station, and 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 particularly uh, uh, um, well, after after that after that even when uh, for some reason it uh, well the, some rockets were fired so so that suddenly it started to spin, and they were. How, many, how much damage it was making. Well, because after it started to spin, it had high rotational inertia, so it was not that easy to stop it. Actually, those spacecrafts over there, if it, if it has a, a mass of a thousand kilograms, it is already pretty, a pretty um, inner, I mean, object with a relatively high rotational inertia. It is difficult to stop it from rotating or uh, to even to uh, and to accelerate as well. Um, now in our vicinity we have a very very uh, large uh, rotating object which has huge rotational inertia and uh, <coughs> uh, I performed once a calculation what kind of wrench I would have to use to try to stop it at the same rate that it is being stopped now. Uh, I'm talking about Earth. The Moon is trying to slow down rotation of the Earth. If I was trying to do it by applying a wrench, my, the, the, my wrench would have to be uh, uh, longer than the size of the solar system. Uh, uh, moon has much lower mo uh, rotational inertia, and therefore Earth was able already to stop it. So, have you noticed that we see only one side of the Moon? Well, have you thought why? How, do, how does it happen, actually, that it rotates this way? It's a rule in the, in the universe. Mercury also always faces uh, the Sun with, uh, uh, with one side and uh, uh, 
Pluto and, and its moon Chevron are facing each other, also each other. Uh, at the time when moon was when moon was formed in the vicinity of the Earth, we were spinning at the rate of six hours per revolution. A revolution took six hours. Now we have 24 hours, and we are slowing down with a rate of uh, just two tenths of a second per or, or two hundredths of a. Second. I forgot. I will have to check it. Uh, but it's a small fraction of a second per century. Uh, all right. <laughs> the, um, the quantity which, which we are going to use now to describe inertia of objects, so it is inertia for translational motion, that quantity is called mass. All right. Uh, and uh, mass and force, uh, how, uh, and, and, and the uh, description of uh, motion, are linked through three Newton's laws. Uh, Newton's first law is, I think, the most difficult to comprehend because most, most of you, I bet, even after this class, will think that Newton's first law is a special case of Newton's second law, which is not true. Newton was not that stupid to, to, to uh, create two laws of which one is redundant. Uh, uh, although a lot of people actually think that he was. Uh, and, uh, um, um, and because of that, actually, I, I even brought the uh, not original uh, versions of his laws, but the tra uh, English translations from, I think, 18th century. Let's first start with, uh, with uh, uh, the uh, first law. It says that if a particle or if an object does not interact with other objects, it is possible to find a reference frame in which this object has zero acceleration. Now, the law doesn't say that if the object does not interact, uh, its acceleration is zero. Or if the, I mean, because you, uh, a lot of, of uh, often you can find a phrase that if the force exerted on an object is zero, then the acceleration of the object is going to be zero. This is not a, a good version of Newton's sec first law. Because now, um, oh, how about if I look at the mouse? And see at the look at the acceleration of the mouse and tell me if it is zero or not zero, okay? Not zero. You observed that it was accelerating. How did you see that it was accelerating? Um, from my point of reference, it was changing direction and speed. Changing direction, direction and speed, correct. So in other words, it was changing Acceleration. velocity. Changing velocity. If the velocity was changing, it means that this object was accelerating. Uh, can you repeat this experiment from my point of view? Or can you imagine what, how, what did I observe? Right. From my point of view, there is no motion. I mean, this, uh, this object was stationary, was stationary in my, from my point of view. So its velocity was zero, and it was constant. Acceleration was zero. Depending on this, how we look at the object, we can assign whichever uh, acceleration we want. If you, if you uh, make, make an experiment now by putting a, a coffee, uh, uh, coffee on, on a dashboard on the car and make a sharp left turn, that coffee is going to accelerate to your right in the car. If you take a look what ha what's happening on, in the reference frame of the street, it was the car was making, accelerating, the coffee was going straight with a constant velocity. All right. Now, 
I really like the version which uh, I never found it in a, in a book, uh, but uh, my professor actually uh, introduced uh, Newton's first law in this way. So, so I'm repeating it always, always to my student. The, he said that Newton's first law should be phrased, there are inertial reference frames. Say it. <laughs> right. And by inertial reference frame, and actually this is also described in the book, uh, inertial reference frame is a reference frame that if an object does not interact with other, object, other objects, its acceleration is zero. All right. Uh, well, here is how... how uh, how it was phrased in 18th century. Everybody perseveres in its state of rest or of uniform motion in a right line unless it is compelled to change, the, uh, to change that state by forces impressed thereon. All right. And probably this phrasing, uh, 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 um, I mean, because it's in archaic language, is confusing to us. Uh, and it was interpreted that if the force is zero, then acceleration is zero. Remember that it is not true. It is not true that if force is zero, acceleration is zero. Right? Do you understand that? that if the object does not interact with other objects, it still can accelerate. Consult with the neighbor, how is it possible? Uh, how is it possible? Yes? So are you saying because you're holding the mouse, you're viewing this object as itself, and it's not interacting with anything else? No, I didn't even care about it. Oh, the question was, the question was since, since I uh, kept it and uh, well, it was in my reference frame sta stationary. Did I recognize that it was not interacting with anything? I'm not. I did not say that. Uh, actually, it was interacting, and and I, I know that it had to interact in order to stay still uh, over here, because my reference frame. I recognize that my reference frame is not an inertial reference frame. So force and acceleration are, the, are not related directly. Uh, what I was actually illustrating here is that it is possible to find a reference frame in which an object has a zero acceleration and at the same time it is possible to find a reference frame in which the acceleration of the same object is not zero. Which actually, obviously, it makes that the two reference frames are not related by a certain transformation. Which one? Galilean, Galilean transformation. Because if they were related by Galilean, if my reference frame and the re in your reference frame were related by Galilean transformation, uh, we would observe the same acceleration. So, for example, if I do something like this, that I go at a constant velocity, well, obviously, I saw acceleration of this object to be a zero vector, right? How did you see acceleration of this object at the time when I was walking at constant velocity? W watch, watch acceleration. Now, which way is the, the acceleration? Show me the direction of acceleration. This is the direction of velocity. This was acceleration, the direction of velocity. Which way? Down. Velocity was changing from horizontal to downward, right? We can start with each other. What, what is the acceleration when I, of this mouse now? Zero. Zero. Who holds that it's zero? If velocity is constant, and you saw, well, you recognize that velocity is constant when I walk. When I walk now, velocity is constant, as long as I walk with a constant velocity. So, you, uh, you would say that the mouse has, its acceleration is zero. So, we would agree. I recognize that acceleration is zero, and you recognize that acceleration is zero, 
provided that I'm moving with a constant velocity, because then the two reference frames are related by Galilean transformations. But how about when I when I move not with a con I accelerate, yes, so I do not move with constant velocity now. I still see it still. So in my reference frame acceleration is zero. In your reference frame it is not. Velocity is changing in your reference frame. This is what I was saying. And actually you can always choose a reference frame in which you can have acceleration of a particle, any, 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 whatever you want. Now, uh, it is important to be able to identify those reference frames. Inertial reference frame, because physics, the laws of physics which we are going to use are written for inertial reference frames. So, for example, the second law, uh, the book does not indicate it uh, specifically, but it should start that in an inertial reference frame, the acceleration of a particle is proportional to the net force, which is the sum of forces exerted on a particle and inversely proportional to mass. So what we have to do we have to find out the sum of all forces exerted on the particle and uh, uh, we can figure out this from um, um, configuration of the universe. Um, tomorrow we will go through various situations, well, today I will start it already, but looking at objects we can recognize how it interacts with other objects and as engineers you will have to have the capability to see it and when you see where the object is you should be able to figure out what it interacts with and what is the value of the force or how it interacts so for example like right, right now i'm standing over here can you see me can you tell me what objects of the universe interact with me. For example, gravity. Uh, who saw gravity? Who, you saw gravity? You saw gravity? Uh, hold on. Uh, I mean, how big is, I mean, what is the shape of gravity? What is its color? Is it cube? Does it have a shape of a cube, a block? It has a shape of a block. What is the shape of gravity? And uh, now look at now look at him because what I like it. I just warned you that that you will not use word uh, interaction. You will use word force. Really, what he meant is that gravity is a, is an interaction, a type of interaction. He called it force. I accept it, yeah, because in a common language we use force interchangeably with interaction. Gravity is really interaction, right? It is not. It cannot exert a force. Force describes interactions between what and what. Objects, correct. Yes, yeah, so only objects can exert a, f uh, a force or only objects can interact. So, however, I, I, I'm still happy that you identify that gravity is involved uh, in the interaction with me. Something interacts due to gravity with me. What? The Earth, right. So you, for example, recognize that Earth is interacting with me due to gravity. All right. Anything else is interacting with me? Yes. Friction. Uh, what is the shape of friction? Is it cube or sphere? What do you say? Or what is the color? What is its color? You don't know that. Why not? Because we can't see it. Because it's again interaction. Friction is also interaction. Although I like that you brought it up. Because there is an object which interacts due to friction. What? The floor, for example. Yeah, so you can recognize that the floor w interacts with me due to friction. 
Or about anything else? Is that friction caused by the spin of the earth? No. Actually, you would, when we will, uh, uh, you will find out, you will find out uh, maybe tomorrow that n right now the frictional force exerted on me is a zero vector. F uh, when we will go interaction by interaction, we will discuss how to recognize uh, from the configuration what actually happens. You will recognize at this moment frictional force exerted on me is zero. About who exerts it? Oh, the floor, right? Yeah, the floor exerts it. You actually will need to ask the floor to exert uh, uh, frictional force to get out from here. Yeah, because if I want to get out, I'll ask the floor, well, push me any way you can. And then and the only f way the floor can do it, it will be by friction. Uh, all right. So, <coughs> What, uh, let's say then we want to find our acceleration of this particle, of particle number four. So from the configuration we have to figure out all forces which are exerted by other objects on this particle. And consistently with the book, uh, the indices, the first in index identifies the source of the force, so it says which object which object exerts the force, second index refers uh, the uh, subject of the uh, force, so on what object the force is exerted. Now force itself is a primitive concept, so I did not write definition of force. Uh, I, it, you can think about that it is push and pull, and then for, for each situation I will tell you how to uh, how to find it. It is. It was the only justification why it is like that is because it is consistent with the uh, with the experiments. All right. So we add those forces. When we add those forces, we can now predict that the, the acceleration of the particle. It is going to be the, in the same direction as the resultant force. We call it net force, and magnitudes are related by the inertial property of the object, in other words, by mass. Here is the uh, version of 18th century uh, version of uh, Newton's second law. The alteration of motion is ever proportional to the motive force impressed and is made in the direction of the right line in which that force is impressed. I think you can you, you can try now to comprehend it. I, I don't exactly comprehend. I mean, I po I'm positive about Newton because there are people who accuse him that, that he didn't understand his laws. Uh, but I think that he did. It is that, remember that he actually wrote these laws before concept of a, a derivative was introduced. For him, acceleration was not a derivative. Later on, he actually thought that it is, that we need calculus. Uh, all right. Now the third law of uh, of motion. Uh, I mean, not not knowing this law causes a lot of uh, a lot of confusion, and I wonder how many of you will uh, fall into this uh, pit uh, today when I ask you a puzzle. But Newton's third law says that. If uh, one object exerts a force on another object, the second object exerts an opposite force on the first one. Uh, in short, we often say that for, uh, for every action there is equal and opposite reaction, which actually I hate, uh, that phrase, um, because uh, uh, it's I mean, if you are already familiar with Newton's third law, you can say that, but you have to understand it properly. It is that for every action, there is a, oh, for every force, there is a, a, a force which is opposite in direction and equal in magnitude. So equal should be phrased that it's equal in magnitude and, and opposite in direction. Yeah, so, uh, 
uh, we skip this magnitude and direction and just say equal and opposite, which actually is a contradiction. Because the only way to have something equal and opposite, it would have to be a zero vector. Okay, so what is, what is a, a number equal to number one, let's say? One. one. What, is equal, what is a number opposite to one? Well, so now equal and opposite means that simultaneously being one and minus one. Right? It's, it's contradiction. Only zero has this property. All right. Now this was this was the 18th century translation from uh, from the, uh, from uh, Newton's work. And actually, note over here that that there is no phrase equal and opposite uh, in. Uh, uh, in this version of Newton's third law, uh, we have equal and directed to contrary parts. All right, now, <laughs> so I want you now to recognize that force is a measure of interaction between objects, and whenever we talk, whenever you talk about force. I want you to think immediately about three questions. Uh, on what that force is exerted, and remember that force is, it can be exerted only on objects. Only objects can exert a force, and Force is always associated with a certain type of interaction. You have to, and we will go through the interactions. There are very few interactions in the universe. However, I know that you will make, uh, you will double that number by inventing interactions which don't exist. All right, I have a comment, a question over there. What is it? Gravity is not an object. Earth is an object. Gravity is a type of interaction. So, indeed, I'll have to, uh, let's take a look at this example. Uh, <coughs> whenever we analyze a situation uh, and try to predict how an object is going to move, we will construct something which is called a free body diagram or a force diagram. And uh, it is a pictorial representation used by physicists and engineers to analyze the interactions uh, of the considered object with the rest of the universe. So, let's take a look at an example. Let's say I have a ball. Uh, <coughs> free body diagram will, in a free body diagram, we have to identify all forces exerted on the object. And a, a ball laying down on a horizontal uh, surface will interact with the rest of the universe through these types of interaction. Earth is going to exert a gravitational force on the ball. So let's try answer those three questions. On what object the force is exerted? On the ball. On the ball. What exerts the force? The Earth. The Earth. Note that both are objects. Ball and, the, and Earth are objects. And the type of interaction? Gravity. gravity. Correct. So we have gravitational force. Gravi gravitational force exerted on the ball by the Earth. Well, the floor exerts also a force which we refer as the, as the normal force. Uh, in some books you can find out that it's a support force. Uh, mm, nice thing about uh, using phrase normal force is that uh, you recognize that that force is pro uh, perpendicular to the surface. All right, now shout on what that force is exerted. On the ball, correct. By what? By the floor. What type of interaction? Normal force, and I buy. I buy that we we don't call it normal interaction uh, but 
we could say that support, right, that this is a support. Really, um, when we analyze it uh, further, we would recognize that it is, uh, it is a result from elasticity of the floor. Uh, the floor bends a little bit and then there is a law which is referred to as hook law. It's exactly the same law which says why, the, why when we compress a spring it's, it exerts a force, so the floor exerts this force uh, as well. Uh, all right, now common errors. Let's say that we are thinking about motion of the fluid in the straw. And uh, and these are the types that these are the types of errors which actually the students gave me. I mean, they were real real errors made by students. Uh, so let's draw a free body diagram for the water in the straw. Well, we can recognize that there is a gravitational force exerted by the Earth. Let's answer those three questions. On what the force is exerted? W which water? Water in the straw, correct. By what? By the earth. Type of interaction? Gravitational, correct. Uh, all right, now <coughs> there is a force exerted by gravity. No. Why not? Not because we counted for the probably uh, those of you who would make it uh, would make that error indeed would recognize that this is that is the same force. Uh, oh. Uh, now this, there is no such force. Gravity doesn't exert the force. The, the gravi gravity does not exert a force. Correct. Um, an object, another object exerts a force. By the way, I mean, we learned actually that we also exert gravitational forces. So, so each of you exerts a gravitational force on each other. It happens that actually it is sufficiently small that we can ignore it, yes. Now, if we're doing a problem uh -huh. and uh, the units are in pounds, isn't, isn't uh, gravity already factored in? Unless you're, unless you're I have no clue. Yeah, I, uh, no. Uh, we, will, we will go to that. I mean, we will do problems and, and we will do something in, in pounds as well. All right. Now, just to be sure, weight of an object. It would be counting the same force for the third time. Uh, all right. That one is an interesting force. Yeah, a suction force. Yeah, because I mean, the guy is creating vacuum over here, so it pulls water. In other words, vacuum sucks it. It doesn't. Why not? Vacuum is not an object. Only objects can exert a force. By the way, if you were in vacuum, unfortunately, you wouldn't be able to, to drink that water or that coke. Uh, now, force of motion. Um, <coughs> I never, I, I never figured out where the, this one came from, but I mean, I had, uh, I had these uh, ideas too. It's again, uh, the, the object is not identified. Uh, net force, you include the net force and count it, which will make a double count actually. And there will be a missing force. As so right now, actually, over here, the fluid inside over here is pushing the, uh, the, the fluid there. This is actually how we drink. We, can, we drink by creating a vacuum here, so we remove, r remove force from the top, and then, the f then that fluid, uh, which is in the cup, is pushing the, uh, the, uh, the earth, uh, the, the, the fluid. So this will be all for today. See you tomorrow. Wait, wait.